Should we hear a story about Action Bronson today? Sure. So when Action Bronson was working on his Sob Stories EP with uh, Harry Fraud as a producer, one of their stated aims was to make drums that would sound really good at open air festivals. Because prior to that, most of what Action Bronson was doing was more in this kind of classic 90s boom bap kind of sound, which sounds great in headphones and sounds great in, um, in your car while you're driving, but it doesn't necessarily translate to a bunch of dehydrated druggies uh, dancing to your music. So, so he decided to make a record that was more about loud, like drums that knock basically. And you can look at that and say like, that's a creative compromise or something. Or you could look at it and say, it's a matter of understanding the context that your art gets appreciated in and then doing the, um, making the necessary adjustments so that it translates better to the proper context. There's a lesson in that, which is that context and embracing it can help determine and guide what you're doing in a way that's really helpful. So let's look at a really dumb one. Um, man, I don't even have it. Actually, I do have one. So I was working on a, a, um, a window display for the last like day and a half or so. And I basically have this big flat file and it's built full size. And if I want to put like a shoe display in it or something, I can and, and I kind of understand it. But right before my presentation this morning, I popped that display into a photograph of the specific area it lived in, which was my plan the whole time, but I just kind of kept putting it off to keep tweaking it. As soon as I did that, the thing was basically done, except that there was another area that just by definition couldn't get addressed in what I was in the file that I was working. I had to do something differently in order to do it. And just throwing it in that photo, like immediately clarified, oh, this part that I thought I still needed to work on was finished. And this part that intellectually I'd thought about a little bit is glaringly missing. And um, I find this is like, it's true about so much stuff. I worked on a book uh, like years ago now, 2010 or something like that. And I found that when I just wrote, like when I wrote in Microsoft Word, or when I wrote on paper, it was really, it was just difficult for me to work on it. But if I wrote each chapter in blogging software as a blog post, it, for whatever reason, was super easy. Um, something about the context, something about like being able to preview it in an immediate context really worked. And I think if I were to go back and, and do that same project again, I would write really, really quickly, but then I would have, I'd copy and paste everything into the book layout and I'd use the book layout actually to appraise where it is. And ideally I'd print it out at full size, trim it, throw a binder clip on it so it felt like a book and sit on the couch and just read the thing. I find that so often looking at a piece of work in its context, even if the context is a poor approximation, a pile of trimmed black and white prints with a binder clip on it is not the same as a book, but it's more like a book than a Microsoft Word document ever will be. And it's more like a book than looking at spreads and InDesign on screen would be. So one of the challenges I think is to figure out in the thing that you're doing, what's what's the context that this will be reviewed in or, or enjoyed in? And then how do you approximate that? And there's so many answers to it. Because if you're designing something, the initial context is actually a presentation, but there's a, a larger context beyond that. And you have to actually kind of balance both of them. And um, you know, my favorite example in Gerhard Richter painting, Gerhard Richter uh, paints in a space that looks like a gallery with the paintings already hung on the wall with nothing else in it. And the, the thing is, is that he's constantly appraising the work as if it's in the context of the final viewing or in the context of a gallery. And later when the work is done, at least for the moment, he'll bring it 
into an actual gallery on his uh, compound or whatever and let the, the paintings hang there for a little bit and basically look at them as if they're paintings. So like no matter what you're doing, the book that you're writing, put it in the context of a book, the speech that you're giving, say it out loud, the video you're working on, project it, view it full screen, whatever it is, the music that you're working on, you know, if you're only listening to it headphones, demo it in the car. You know, just figure out what those contexts are, approximate them, and test often. All right, thanks for watching.